Bill, what up? It's your boy Larry, man. Yo, I love what you're doing with this podcast, spreading positivity around the world, making this a better place to live in. You got to get me on there. I got to get on there for an episode. We got to talk about something great, something that uh, makes people smile, laugh, and gets them in a good mood. So hit me up, brother. Let's do this. All right? You right. <laughs> Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Philip Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help around the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope that what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. Welcome back, people. Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Philip Wilkerson. Uh, today, I have a new guest. Um, I told you earlier, the listeners, that most likely this podcast is going to be me having a bunch of guests because I don't think anyone wants just to hear me talk to myself. Um, but I have a special guest today, a good friend of mine. Everyone is a, a, as a guest is going to be a friend of mine. I'm not having strangers because, one, I'm not balling out and I'm not the uh, a, a world famous podcaster, but so everyone I'm bringing into my podcast are going to be good friends of mine. And today's special uh, guest is my boy Larry Smith. Yo, hey, I'm here. Sorry, oh. hey. <laughs> oh, I'm here. <laughs> Technology. Like what, 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 what can you say? The, the, the <laughs> intro was beautiful. It was great. Yo, thank you. It's great to be here. I, I wanted to throw in some awkward pause to to get your listeners uh, just kind of off tilt a little bit, but it's uh, it's wonderful to be here on the show, man. Thank you for having me, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to a good conversation, man. Let's rock and roll. Man. I'm, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's just how we do, though, man. That's how we do. I literally thought I lost it. I was like, oh, man, I, I literally thought I figured it out. <laughs> oh, that's a little... <laughs> Just for a little uh, introduction, how do we know each other, Larry? Let's, you know, just go down memory lane before we set up what the episode is about. Let's take it back to George Washington's home, a.k.a. Mount Vernon High School, Alexandria, Virginia. Um, oh, right. That's that's where it all started, man. Yeah, Playing man. Football, Good old Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon majors. And... Uh, we we were just running around, getting dirty, hitting those weight rooms, hitting those parties, and enjoying life. Okay, so I'm going to do a little uh, backwards, you know, you know how people uh, remember back in the day. So back in the day, I will give mad credit that Larry was quite the football player. Larry was quite the athlete, the, the, uh, the outside linebacker, I remember. And I was quite the bench warmer. So... So shout out to Larry for actually playing in high school football. <laughs> no, nah, hey, you're not all giving the, all, the, all, the, all, the, all the party and part that was there. So that was probably a good reason I played football. You know, while I warmed the bench, I still uh, was invited to parties. <laughs> nah, you're not giving yourself enough credit, man. You were, you could catch the ball. No, you could see, run. Now you're lying. You, you could run. You could run. You could run your tail off because you also ran track, right? Okay, that's it. So thank you. You gave me the mad credit. I could actually, I couldn't catch, but I couldn't run. And uh, and you made everyone laugh, and you were a great uh, team member, but uh, just just a lot of great memories, man. I think, I, you know, I look back at high school, and, and so many people talk about college, and I had a great experience in college, but I also had a really great experience in high school. And, and I tell people, like, man, I just, I miss high school. And they're like, wow, I hated high school. I'm like, I feel really oh, bad for you high because high school was great for me. I mean, we just had so much fun, and uh, it's just a great time in my life to look back on. Yeah, I don't think I had any. I think I liked high school a lot, honestly. I like college, too, though. So I, I'm in the same boat, but at both phases, there was not uh, a phase of that life where it was um, bad for us. 
But so, you know, pulling it back. So that's, you know, we kind of set up for the listeners how we knew each other. But the particular topic for this podcast and why Larry was a special guest is because uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Larry really inspired me personally with his uh, – he gave up alcohol for 30 days, a 30-day challenge. Um, and at the end of that 30-day challenge, uh, Larry joined me in my home bar, coined the Loose Shoe Lace Saloon, uh, for his first drink at that 30-day challenge. So, mind you, I guess it doesn't sound like a, a bad influence, but <laughs> your, <laughs> your first drink <laughs> – your first drink after 30 days. And while we were drinking, uh, I said, you know, I was just really curious. I was like, you know, Larry, I feel like Lent is about to come up. Um, while I'm not the most practicing Catholic, I was like, I think that I do have, uh, being inspired by you, I think I know what I'd like to give up for the whole Lent season, and that was alcohol. And so, I think we just kind of discussed it while we were drinking <laughs> what we were going to apply to that <laughs> alcohol was, a, was an actual challenge. Now, viewer, or well, I keep on saying viewer, listener disclaimer, me and Larry are not raging alcoholics, but we are quite the connoisseurs of good bourbon. Um, so let's just kind of go a little bit. When you did your 30-day cleanse of alcohol, mm-hmm. What were some of the reasons and rationales why you did it? Yeah, yeah, no, great, great question. Um, you know, I think the the two main factors why I stopped drinking for the thirty days um, was for number one, uh, my, my general health. Um, you know, I was kind of getting a little lazy. You know, eating bad foods, and I, I wanted to really give my body a break. Um, You know, alcohol can really put a toll on your body, on your liver. Um, You know, your your body is going through a lot to process it and get it out. I really wanted to give myself a a break to kind of rejuvenate. And and the second thing was um, kind kind of dual purpose. It was emotional and also like spiritual clarity. Uh, I just wanted to take some time to clear my brain out, to, to clear my emotions, and, and just to kind of feel, feel uh, you know, a, a sense of clarity where, where I could kind of just process my emotions and go through things without any outside, outside substance. So I, I wanted to take a month to kind of reset my, my biological clock, but as, but as well as my mental and my emotional and my spiritual clock. So. I think I went into it with that, with that, uh, with that intent. You know, it's interesting because, uh, mind you, you know, the things that you went into it with, uh, end up quite kind of honestly being the same reasons I did, but, um, yeah. which I give you, I give you more credit for it because you actually, um, I guess just out of nowhere, not say out of nowhere, you did that. And I found that I used the external, excuse of saying Lent, you know, people give up things for Lent to do the same thing, but the rationale was, the reasons and rationales was a similar thing. Um, I don't know quite honestly if without an external factor of a religious structure like Lent or something like that, I would have done it. Um, I just, you know, I don't think I was in the mood to do it, but quite honestly, I think the same reasons, the health and the mental clarity were probably some of the things going into it that I thought uh, why I wanted to do it with some of the reasons. Um, And quite honestly, you know, it was just, I don't know, it was just interesting to see, uh, see those things that like, you know, knowing, it's kind of funny, like, you know, going into things, the reasons why you should give up stuff and do things, you know, the reasons why you want to do it. I I think when you get some tangible uh, rewards of actually feeling those things, it helps you stick up stick with it how how do you feel when you're going through that did you feel like in, incrementally you were getting some of those things that you set for yourself did they come true yeah no i think so and, and you know you 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 make a really uh, good point um and you know when you when you set a goal for yourself and start yourself on a journey you know you have an idea of, of what 
you want the outcome to be, but you know that's not always the case all the time. You know, you, you, you're going to you're going to go through some growing pains as you go through that journey. So I think, you know, for me when I when I first started out, there was like really just like five things that I kind of like struggled, but also you know were really valuable for me. So the first is like when I stopped drinking. What's funny is the other thing I switched out for alcohol was more caffeine. <laughs> like, oh, you, like you I switched? Needed, <laughs> yeah. Like, like I needed, okay. I needed like more stimulus in in my brain because my brain was like, Larry, like you were putting alcohol in your body, you know, every evening when you got home from work, you know, you were having a drink and relaxing. Like you, you need something to fulfill that vacancy, that void in your life. And so I started drinking a lot of coffee, and I'm like, I'm drinking coffee until, like, 8 p.m. at night. Like, what am I oh, doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy, but, you know, it's funny. I tra- You know, because I travel for work, you know, overseas, and, and, and I've been fortunate to, uh, you know, to be exposed to different cultures, coffee is really a part of – every aspect of their social life from the morning through night. Uh, and and in the U.S., you know, we, we tend to drink coffee in the morning and maybe a little cup in the afternoon. But really, they're, they're doing coffee, you know, at night after dinner. They're doing a coffee, wow. you know, uh, after a night of, uh, of drinking. It's just it's just so much ingrained oh. into just their social life that I've kind of taken a little piece of that. And, like, now I feel okay. Like, after dinner, I want to have a cup of coffee. But I digress. So... I, number no, one, I switched out coffee for caffeine. Yeah, it's crazy, right? I was drinking like eight to nine cups a day, which was bad. <laughs> you know, coffee's a diuretic; it can it can dehydrate you. So I I had to be careful. Uh, but number two, like I, I really started to like stabilize my mood, um, and, and I kind of felt more in control of my emotions. And because you know, alcohol is a depressant; it makes you feel you know kind of chill and 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 down when you're really hype and yeah, alcohol does whatever to a, a bunch of different people based off their body chemistry, but I felt my mood was more stabilized. And I think number three, as I was going through the journey, what was like really cool is I started to become more focused and, and more productive. And I started to like really attack my goals and my aspirations and putting more energy behind just the things that I wanted to achieve. Because I think when I started drinking, it, it it made me lazy if I had to be if I had to be blunt and honest. Like I, you know, I'd come home from work and you know, granted, I, I'm married, I have two kids, I, I'm a family man, so you've got a bunch of things that you got to do when you get home, getting the kids ready for the day. And I would just want to take a drink and relax and unwind. But what I'd find is that I actually, you know, I, I would get lazy. I mean, do you ever feel like that? Like when you do that when you get home and, and you start well, to see, drink, you'll you'll get lazy. I mean. Ironically, you sharing your experience, like even when you told me you were about to, when you did it, and some of the things that you felt, that was after those thirty days when you had your first drink with me, it was almost like setting me up for mentally preparing what was going to be for me. Um, yeah. And I did find the same things happen. Um, mind <laughs> you, I think I drink a lot of coffee. I drink a lot of coffee during the day. I didn't drink any coffee at night, but I drink about like six cups in the morning. I crush coffee. I'm like a coffee man. I love coffee. I drink straight. I drink. I drink coffee like I drink coffee like I drink my whiskey straight up black. I don't want to mess with it. Yo, just give me it, too. Just give me the coffee. <laughs> just give me the coffee the way it goes. Like you know, like I don't understand why. Like I'm the easiest person to order coffee for. Just give it to me black. But black and bitter. You, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like my soul. Like, <laughs> I had the taste buds of a sixty year old. Um, so. The, <laughs> I love it. The love main it. thing, but I but I did do the same thing. I did notice those two things. I substituted, well, concurrently, I substitute, I used to drink and smoke cigars, and they were tied together. So that was not healthy. So when I stopped drinking, I had no desire to smoke cigars. So that was healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, what I did replace it with is I, you know, I try to drink more water. I didn't like just plain water. So I was, I, I find, uh, which I'm drinking right now, um, LaCroix. You know LaCroix, those, look, 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 LaCroix, whatever it's called. How do you pronounce that job? L.A. Croix? Oh, yeah, the, the LaCroix, the uh, the seltzer water. Uh, yeah, I call it L.A. Seltzer Croix. water, right? Uh, LaCroix. Yeah, for the, so, so it's probably French, yeah, so it's a whole, 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 whole. Well, for the viewers, I just call it L.A. Crocs. Um, 
<laughs> That's how I like. They know what's up. <laughs> but, for, well, but for the point is, I bought cases and cases of that. And that's what I drank. So you're right, like a substitution of something. Like I was tired of just drinking water, so I found me a substitution, um, which I really like these these flavored juices. And two, I think I agree with you. Like I remember, I would I would know that I get home from work, I would do dinner time, do the whole thing with Maggie uh, and Bennett, my son, um, and then you know typically before Lent, I go in the basement, grab just. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, a bottle, new flavor, post up and watch a game, and then just be lazy. Um, yep. But while, while I, didn't have that act, I didn't have that activity of drinking, what I substitute with. So funny enough, I actually started working on my podcast idea. I was, it literally was, I was lazy up to the point where I wasn't doing my podcast idea. Um, <laughs> I, started medit- I started meditating. I started wow. reading books. I just, I had to like find, things to do and not to say like you know alcohol but alcohol was probably the lazy elixir because i would just watch tv but now that yep. i didn't have that like that slowly that routine i got other things done and i think yeah it's, it was like a weird sensation um uh of substitution and i think when you realize that you need to jump start or restart something yeah, you find, you know, like when you have a plan, you got, usually you have to find a substitution, right? Like if you have a diet, you hate yep. eating healthy food, and you start, you know, giving up the bad food, what what do you substitute it with? You know, you either substitute it with the exercise, but also you find healthy snacks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that, that's, that's, that, that's a really good point. You, 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 you definitely have to uh, – no, go ahead. No, I'm saying I find that interesting that, you know, <laughs> what you said is I find that interesting that coffee is like your social thing. Like, no, yeah. You drink coffee at it's, night. It's, it's weird, man. I, uh, I, I just love the taste of it. I love the boldness of it. The, like, I drink my coffee just like you. Black, no sugar, no milk. I like it, like, stronger. I, it's almost like I just want to chew on the coffee beans and grind it up in my mouth and just eat it <laughs> like candy. Like that, that's how much I love just black coffee. It's just the – I just love that and just the flavor. And, and I mean, you know, I, I posted on Facebook the other day, you know, I had a little issue where we were in the process of moving, and uh, I, I started uh, drinking coffee, you know, as I'm out shopping, and, and I'm drinking my coffee mug, and I'm like, why does my coffee taste like – fabric softener and i'm so lazy and so tired and i just want to keep drinking it so i just drink the whole thing and the next morning i wake up and to go fill it up again because i was just too lazy i didn't clean out my coffee cup at night uh, i open up my mug and there's a my son's sock sitting at the <laughs> bottom of my mug <laughs> and, uh, and i'm like that's where that nasty laundry detergent fabric softener uh, taste came from. I have no idea of how it got in there, but the fact that I drank the whole cup and didn't open it up uh, while I was drinking it just goes to show how much I love coffee, that even if even if it tastes weird, I'll still drink it. Uh, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. But, That's but, man but, of the, but, man of the know, mission, man. <laughs> man of the mission. I, I go hard, man. I go hard in the paint. And you know the other thing that's funny that I that, – that, you know, I, I want to share with the viewers, uh, and not the viewers, I'm sorry, the listeners, is that uh, I started to save money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, like I'm I'm not the old, like, 18-year-old. Yeah, I mean, let's be legal here. I started drinking at 21, you know, being, you know, sarcastic, of course. Uh, but okay. I... I didn't touch it until 21. I started to save money because I drank good alcohol now you know what i mean because i got a good job i can afford it so i don't buy you know pinnacle vodka or or i'm not (laughs) drinking aristocrat or seagrams or mad dog 2020 (laughs) or you know i mean i've I've moved up in the world and and i buy good alcohol so i spent a good penny on on beer and and uh and whiskey whether it's single malt or, or bourbon but more importantly like I stopped making purchases when I've after I've you know had a few drinks. 
So you know how you get on Amazon, right? And sometimes you just go on yeah. Amazon binge weeks, and, like, every night you're like, oh, I need that, and I need this. And just like you go through a YouTube hole where you end up, like, looking for a video on YouTube and you find yourself watching, like, some, like, Japanese, like, uh, acrobatics, you know, weird stuff. Yeah, or yeah. You just end up on the weird part of YouTube. That's what happens to me when I do it. Amazon. Yeah. I end up on some weird parts of Amazon, and I'm like, yeah, I probably need that. Uh, that's like a, a magical, like, self-winding hose. I probably need that. I'm going to buy that. And when I'm drinking, you know, my clarity and, and my mind just goes away, so I start to buy these things, and I'm like, I really don't need these, these things. But it, 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 so it just goes back to the fact that, number one, start saving money on not buying alcohol, then number two, stop making stupid purchases. So I was able to save money and actually stick to my budget um, that, that my wife and I create every month to help us reach our financial goals. So um, it just goes back to the, the, the point of the mental clarity that it gives you when you stop drinking. Um, you're able to, like, really focus in and achieve the goals that you set for yourself and your family. Wow. Uh, Larry, you you're like the old ladies on QVC. Uh, you're a, a shopping. You shop while drunk. Yo, pretty, <laughs> pretty much. You know what's funny about that? So, that's if a you real ever thing, stayed though. home from yeah. work, oh, it's a it's a real thing. If you ever stayed home from work, what do you see on TV throughout the whole day? There's two types of uh, uh, advertisements. One is for yeah. lawyers. Because we're in a very, uh, you know, litigious society now, one's suing everyone. And then number two is everything is uh, selling, you know, QVC, buy this, buy that. Why is that? Because those who are on fixed incomes, retired, um, or whatever else, they're sitting in front of the computer and they're buying all that stuff. They're That's buying crazy. everything. It, and, and, and that system has been working really well for these companies. And that's who they're marketing to. And that's why you get boxes of, like, $3 jewelry from, from your grandma that you've never worn that turned your skin green um, because she's shopping on QVC you know, all day, and she's and sending you that stuff on Christmas. And maybe she's sipping on something, too, at the same time. You never know. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope grandma's getting lit. Hope. <laughs> grandma's getting lit. Grandma's Let getting me lit ask you this on one. Can I ask you a question, Phil? Let me let me ask you this. Um, I'm interested in, in in hearing from you, like not only what you went through, but like the person closest to you, as they saw you going through this journey, um, i.e., your wife. You know, what were some of her thoughts or or or, or actions as as you were going through this journey? Well, one of the things is my wife knows. See, the thing about challenges for me, um, my wife, she literally says you go zero to 100. It could be good or bad. So, mm -hmm. with my, my, like, with my focus. So, when I said, hey, I'm going to give up alcohol for Lent, she's like, all right. And she knows that if I really, like, fully say it and say it, I'm going to do it, right? Yeah. And so, she didn't even, it wasn't even, like, a real challenge. You know, we go out. She's like, Okay. Uh, you know, everyone's drinking, family of people are drinking, and they just know I'm not drinking with them. It, it wasn't, she knows that I, if I could really, really fully commit to something. And on the flip side, she realized, like, if I'm a drink, you know, I have this full bar. Not that I say I'm getting drunk, but it's like, she knows that, yeah, like, it, it's, you know, I have a hard time, and I'm really, what I was really working on still in life is moderation, you know, about, mm -hmm. um, and that's the same thing. Um, I have upgraded from purchasing, you know, uh, what was my job? Captain Morgan and like <laughs> Natty Light in high school. I, I, you know, and in college, all these cheap things to, you're right, more expensive bourbon. And uh, looking at my home bar right now while I'm talking to you doing this podcast, I have, I, I don't know, quite a collection. I know that if I really totaled it, it'd make me sick how much money I spent on all these booze in my house. Um, so I think she was a little bit of a more appreciative too of one, uh, not spending as much money Two, 
um, just seeing me actively commit to something, you know, she said that sometimes is inspiring to her. She's like, wow, you really can be serious when you need to. And, um, and the, and the, and the clarity thing too, like, um, I'm just more present. Uh, mm. that makes more sense. More present. It does. Uh, not foggy. You know, yep. the, the main, the, the, I woke up every morning a hundred times better. Yeah. Not to say just not a hangover, but just normal wake up, like just, uh, normal, uh, straight days of going to sleep at a decent time and waking up clear headed. And every day of Lent, I felt pretty good about that, you know? Um, and I think another thing too that was noticeable was that, um, you know, like you said, emotional, the emotional attachment to things. Like I didn't feel like, oh man, I had a tough day. I, I had a tough day. I tried to figure out something else to do, but I had a tough day. I, like, I'm not joking. I actually started meditation and prayer. Um, and I create both because, you know, I, I feel like I, you know, I call it meditation slash prayer because while my thoughts were like on God and spiritual and stuff, I sat like I was meditating. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, you know, I, I didn't like put my hands together like you're praying. I sat down in a dark, in a, in a room on a yoga mat and I literally just shut off uh, all the noise. I put on some like Chinese uh, meditation music and I would just sit there and uh, my mind, I think my mind was a lot better and I feel a lot better. So, and I think, you know, my wife being my closest person to me, I think she, she saw the effects of that. Um, and I think she appreciated that, which is curious because now that I, now that I did all that, um, you know, me and you are in a bourbon society. We are bourbon connoisseurs. I'm actively, yeah. like, right now I'm thinking, like, how I'm going to integrate drinking again. But because I'm not, I'm not giving up alcohol. I, I know that right now. It was good for a cleanse. It was good for Lent. It was a good thing. But I enjoy the taste. And like I said, I don't enjoy, like, I don't have to get drunk or hammered, but I enjoy the taste. I also like that social aspect of being around other uh friends and talking over drinks and stuff like that so i'm thinking like how am i going to integrate drinking back into my life and uh mm. how, how did you think how, how are you going to do it you know that's a that's a good question and uh you know so i personally you know i have like if I see something, you know, I, I, I'm kind of a man of vision, and and I need I'm a visual I'm a visual kind of person. So, um, if it's in front of me, it's harder for me to kind of, you know, not not do it. You know what I mean? So I, one of the things that I've tried to to do to kind of mitigate the risk of me drinking is hiding the alcohol. <laughs> As I keep it out of sight, like your beautiful bar with all those wonderful bottles of bourbon just sitting up yeah. there looking at me every day as I went walk down into my uh, my basement would be hard for me. And, and not hard from the sense where I'd go over there and just start rampaging my bar, but I would look at it and I'd go, mm, man, that looks good. Like I probably should have a little bit of that. And then I'd be like, oh, I need to have a little bit more. I need to have a little bit more. So the point is I know what my triggers are. And now that I know what my triggers are, I can I'm aware um, of them and I can control them and and I know not to put myself in certain situations. So, um, you know, if I'm trying to abstain from drinking for a night, I know that I probably should not put bourbon on my kitchen counter, so that when I go home from work, it's the, one of the first things I see when I'm trying to get food. Um, because I know that personally, not that I'm like weak or whatever, but I know that that would be tempting for me. So I, I've been s smarter and more strategic about number one, where I keep my alcohol and then number two, the situations that I'm going to put myself in. So I, I think those two things are helping me to kind of adjust to this life, you know, now back again with alcohol after these 30 days of, of cleansing. So, so yeah, I think, I think that's where I'm at and, uh, it's worked well for me and I know my weaknesses and, uh, I, I just have to kind of communicate that to my friends and, and let them know like, Hey, 
Phil, when I come over your house, you need to put a sheet over your bar. Because I don't want to No, no, no. Not at all, man. But, uh, just, you got to be aware of your, uh, of your triggers. You got to be aware of your triggers, man. Well, I realized uh, my thing was that I, like, my I'm thing good. was I'm, I'm fine. I'm looking at my bar right now and I'm drinking my LA Crocs. Um, yeah. LaCroix, whatever. Um, and I think one of the things I, I found that I'm, how I'm going to integrate it back into my life is just, uh, plan ahead. Like, I'm not, mm. I've, I'm, I'm almost to the point where I think I'm just going to look at drinking as a special occasion thing. Um, so for, I, I actually, like, when I had this full bar, I was serving people drinks during Lent and not drinking. I had no problem. I enjoyed serving other people drinks and, 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 uh, and you know, being hospitable and social. Um, so for me, I think that I'm going to make alcohol a special occasion thing. So, um, wow. If it's just a normal, if it's a normal, if it's a normal Tuesday, I don't feel like drinking. But if it's like, uh, you know, one of our bourbon tastings with the fellas, then that's a special occasion for me. Um, cause one, it's like you know, the health and the calories and just feeling good. But it's just like, you're right. It's like a, if it's a normal day, I, I think what I, I've come to the point is I'm, I've taken away the norm, not the normalcy, but the routine of it. And it's not a yep. routine part. Like alcohol is yep. not a part of my routine no more. It's a special occasion thing. And by forcing myself to completely take it out, it's not become a routine. So, like, I put in my Google Calendar a bourbon tasting I have in a couple of weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to probably be one of the next times I drink. And it's a couple of weeks. Really? So that's, that, that's, that's great, man. You know, so it's not – I'm not swearing off. I'm not uh, – I enjoy it. I'm not going to even sugarcoat that I don't enjoy drinking. I don't enjoy the taste and flavor. But I think what I learned from this Lent – season and learning from your challenge and other people and just how it wasn't a big deal. It really wasn't a big deal while I was doing it because people weren't. It's not like these dare commercials where people are forcing you to drink or shoving alcohol down your throat. Uh, It's not like that. We're we're grown adults. You just say, no, thank you. You still can socialize. You still can have a conversation. I mean, I don't know. One of the biggest pet peeves for me is when people are like, I can't can't have fun without alcohol. That is the biggest clock of, like, Crock of shit, part of my language that I've ever heard. Like, I, I love. I still can talk to people without. I can still went to wizard games and sporting events without drinking, because um, it just I didn't need it. But uh, I think what I I do definitely like um, sometimes the flavor and the social aspect of it. So it'll be a special yeah. occasion, um, you know, and it's planned out. Uh, and I think when I say special occasion. Now I, I also feel like it doesn't have to be once a week. I don't feel like I want to drink and look forward to every weekend because then that's kind of weird. Like, like then you're just going to drink all weekend. So that's not me. So I literally think that it'll just be basically based on special events where I feel like I really want to drink or go out with friends or maybe if a friend from a long time ago comes over to my bar at home and we're going to share a drink together, that seems like a special occasion. But if it's not that, then I'm not drinking. And I, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, saying this right now. I'm developing. I literally just made that up just now, because that's kind of like mm-hmm. what I'm thinking about how I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna see honestly how I hold up to it. Um, you know, spacing out my drinking into you know, special events. Cause I think in the uh, long run, I don't think. I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't think in the long run. I'm, I don't want to cut it out. I'm not gonna admit to cut it out. But I think that. Cause I, I think that it, it's, it's, I've cut the routineness of it. I know that. I feel like I did. I felt, I felt like it was becoming routine and I, I feel like Lent forced me to break that. That's yeah. Sense. Nah, that's a, that's a really good point, man. And I think I feel the same way about the routine. And when you set yourself into a routine and, and, and when that routine includes alcohol, once you become conscious of that routine, it's, it's a lot easier to kind of break away from it like you know that like oh wow every time you know the, like i said the trigger is like it's like i start drinking when this situation happens or i usually drink you know at this time of day and and it's like i usually come home and do this or, or i drink to do that like it becomes a routine and 
and it becomes it becomes dangerous, and and because you know it, it's just it, you know we all know that drinking too much is not good for you, and of course we all picked up bad habits in college, right? We were binge drinking, drinking to blackout, and um, you know not everyone had that college experience, but I I certainly did, and uh, you know I think for me, you know I think the important thing about about uh, this this whole journey of, of of alcohol was was really understanding what my relationship to alcohol was, and mm-hmm. like what did I really like? How did I associate alcohol with my identity? Um, right. When and 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 I started to realize that looking back over my past, like I really made alcohol a big part of my identity. So when someone met me for the first time. I would make a point to be like, hey, by the way, you know I drink, right? And this is what I drink. And this is what I love to do when I'm drinking. And this is what I love about alcohol. And this is what – and so when someone would meet me, the first, you know, few things that they would associate me with is alcohol. And when I became conscious of that, I started to go, wow, like, why do I really feel the need to associate myself with alcohol? What – like, who, 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 who am I without it? You know what I mean? So I was kind of like wondering what who is Larry without without beer, without alcohol. When Larry goes to a party, does he always have to drink to be fun and and goofy and is that my personality on alcohol or is that my personality in real life? You know what I mean? Like or not under the influence of any kind of substance. And I it really challenged me to to really think about kind of who I was and who, what am I associating myself with? Because we kind of we kind of associate ourselves with different things. We want our identity to be associated with things that we want other people to perceive us as. Whether they're like, oh, we're really refined and cool because we drink a certain you know type of alcohol, or we drive a certain type of car, or live in a certain type of neighborhood, or whatever else. And we we attach these like tangent assets or things to our identity and and I felt that I was doing that with alcohol way too much and I wanted to distance myself from it so I really it was really of a challenge it was more like who is Larry without these things and can I still be the same social butterfly and person that I am without the alcohol that I am with the alcohol Um, and I found that you know I can be but I'm also a little different I'm I'm actually more like reserved and quiet when I'm not drinking and drinking kind of lowers that inhibition and I'm actually a lot more forward and, you know, just open and whatever, blah, blah, blah. So I, I kind of became conscious of that dynamic of my personality on when I'm drinking and when I'm not drinking. And now I know uh, just that part of my personality and that part of who I am under the influence. So, I just urge, you know, the listeners, if you're having, you know, any trouble with whatever it's food or or exercise yeah. or, or some part of your life that, that you're struggling with, I say, like, take a look at how does that thing or whatever associate with who you are and your identity and what you want other people, what the, the, you know, what you want their perceptions to be of you. Now, you can't really influence people's perceptions they're going to be what they're going to be but you should at least be conscious of kind of the things that you're talking about with people when you first meet them because those those are the things that they're going to associate you with so uh, that's very you know it's it's just important yeah that's very powerful because like i was about to say saying i mean not the same thing about my identity um because you know it was like a social uh you know it was a social experiment within myself uh you know, who, not say who, yeah, almost like who am I, who can I be without drinking? But, uh, yeah. quite honestly, I found that I was the same exact person. Um, you know, uh, but the same exact person, just a little bit more exaggerated, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm strange anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, me so, too, man. <laughs> so I just come to find out I'm just a little, no, I'm still strange. Like, I still was making, like, random Google, Google surveys and sending you know, all that, like, sending Google surveys to people and still giving out ill fill awards and still being goofy. But um, but I, I do 
I do – what I, ta- like, attach from what you said um, in your main thing was whether you struggle with this or that, I always implore people, if you feel like something is not good for you, um, I always employ these cleanses or challenges to yourself and give yep. yourself give yourself a, a end date, a start date and an end date, and give yourself yep. a window of time that, like, that I'm not going to drink for a year, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's not be unrealistic. Like, that's really hard. Um, but you can commit. I think that, you know, they say it takes 66 days to create a new habit, uh, a Mm -hmm. positive one. Give yourself at least half of that. Like, give yourself 30 days of really trying hard. It might suck. It might be really challenging. Um, Now, I do understand to the listeners out there that there are people that suffer from real addiction and alcoholism and things like that. So, for me to make light of that and say, just do it for 30 days, you'll be fine, that's not what I'm really talking about for them. They need, like, real separate help. But for anyone else that's not really fully addicted but still struggling with something, if that if that makes sense, give that up for 30 days and or and or give it, you know, give it a couple of days. And, yeah, journal the experience. Talk about the experience. Really think about what you changed in 30 days. And you really, like we're talking about right now, me and you, You'll see a you'll see a tangible difference. I don't think you'll see a tangible difference in day one or day two, but you will see a tangible difference in thirty days. I literally, for me, I lost ten pounds because I stopped drinking. I started my actual podcast because I stopped drinking. Um, I slept better, thus waking up better. So I gave myself a real solid thirty days, and I totally noticed stuff. So. Um, you know, it was pretty cool. So, Larry, we've been talking for a while. Um, I think we should do, like, a a second wrap-up someday, um, talk about some other thing. But I think this was great uh, that you joined me on this podcast. Um, You know, it's crazy. Like, I never thought that uh, we'd be grown-ups from Mount Vernon (laughs) High School drinking drinking, uh, Bud Light or Natty Light to being sophisticated bourbon connoisseurs with cigars and wearing bow ties. You know? So we, we went from ashy to classy. We went from ashy to classy. Ashy to classy, wow. baby. Ashy to classy. And, hey, just but for it, the, you know, listeners, we also went to the same college. You know, you went to – you got your master's from George Mason. I got my bachelor's from George Mason. So we got to make sure we, the listeners know that, too, as well. Oh, you try to make me claim Mason. And you know I don't try to claim them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they, they only, oh, the, only on. thing, the only thing Mason gave me was debt. I claim that JMU, baby. <laughs> the best school in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. You're a Duke. That's my dad. My, dad, my dad's a Duke. Uh, it's all right. Oh, your dad's a Duke dog. Yep, yep. He uh, he was part of the, was it the 70, 77 undefeated football team. So he played, uh, he played uh, defensive tackle. Yep. And he, at JMU. You know, yep, at JMU. Yep, he was. Uh, he's got a poster in his in his office of uh, of him um, about to tackle somebody. So he was a star football player for for uh, James Madison University. Oh, was he hyped about the state uh, the national championship? Would you say? Oh, uh, of course, of course. So the first national championship game they brought him down as part of like one of the first undefeated teams to come through JMU and they walked out during halftime and had this little show it was cool man. but but I digress oh that's cool but, uh, yeah but, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Well, go Dukes yeah <laughs> but hey yeah thanks, <laughs> thanks for uh for for having me you know on, on this uh on this broadcast man and um I, I just really love what you're doing you know just Everything that you post on social media is just really great. Um, you're you're an inspiration to me and to to many others. And, and just continue what you're doing, man, because the the airwaves and TV and social media is filled with a lot of garbage these days. And we really need someone like you to continue to promote positivity, kindness, and and really just caring for other people and. Sometimes, like, I even forget, you know, to, to do those things. Um, and 
you, you, you just continue to be a bright light in this dark world. So I just really appreciate everything that you're doing, man. Just wanted to tell you that, make sure the listeners know that you are listening to someone who is genuinely like just a great spirit and someone who cares about other people and wants to make this a better place to live. And so I just, I just think that's great and just never lose that about you and just continue pushing, man. And, you're going to find the naysayers that say, nah, what you're doing is crazy, man. And they're going to try to, you know, like crabs in a barrel, bring you down to, to, to their level. But just keep going, brother, because, uh, what you're doing is powerful and, and, um, people are, are going to remember that. Oh, shucks. You made me blush. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem, man. It's that, great. Man. All right. Well, I'll holler at you later. And, uh, thank you for being on, man. All right, brother. We'll talk, man. Take care. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. You have been listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Positive Filter was edited by Ronald Young Jr., host of Time Well Spent Podcast and creator of Oh It's Big Ron Studios. For this episode, I would like to thank Larry Smith for being my guest and inspiring me to give up alcohol for Lent to challenge myself. As always, I'd like to thank Ryan for the music, Maggie for being an amazing and supportive wife, and all the listeners. If you have any questions for Positive Filter, please message me or use the hashtag AskPositiveFilter on Twitter. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends. Spreading positivity is a movement. Thanks for listening.